Okay, what we have here is a slightly different display of the same data that we just looked at on the previous slide. And what we want to do is key this into the 12C and take a look at it. Now, I've got the 12C here and it's it's got numbers everywhere. I mean, if you did a, a, a PV value, you would see that we got numbers up here in the, in the financial registers. Uh, we've got numbers in the X, the Y, the Z, the T registers. As we roll down through here, we've got numbers all over. We don't really care. We don't really care because it doesn't really matter. Uh, we do see the begin in the sign in the, in, the, in the display here that I talked about. And we want to get the begin out of there because we want to do payments at the end of the period. And if you look on key 7, you see this, this is the begin key and this is the end key. So if we do G end, we take it out of there. If we don't see begin, then we know we're in the end mode. If we want to see begin, if we want to we go back to begin and we'll see the begin. But without anything up here, we're in the end mode. And the key in the calculator, the key in the data, is quickly take another look at the data uh, for the 12C, or for the problem. And that was 250,000, 30 uh, year, 6% interest. So we could key in here 200, uh, well, let's just start from the left and, and go across. It's kind of easier to know where you are. And or the number of periodic payments, it was going to be a 30 year amortization. So we key in 30. And we want to take advantage of the 12 multiply, which is in blue. So we invoke the blue G key and hit the N key, and we get 360 periodic payments. Likewise, for the interest, it's a 6% annualized interest rate. We want to divide by 12 to get the monthly interest rate. So we hit the blue G key, invoke the blue, divide, and hit the I, and we get 0 0.5. The present value of the loan that we're going to be borrowing is going to be 250000 and since we're really receiving credit or re receiving that effectively in our, into our pocket or into our bank book to go buy something with, you know, like a house or something, it's a positive number. And we put that into, you know, present value. We're going to be looking for the payment, so we can't put that in. But the future value, we know the future value is going to be zero. So we put zero in there. So it doesn't matter what was in those registers before. We didn't need to hit the F clear fin registers to put those numbers in. We just overwrote what was in there. You know, you can't go wrong. Because you put four in and you solve for the fifth. As we press for payment, we get $1,498.88. Now, the beauty of not having to press F fin before you run the financial registers is you can go back and you can do a lot of what ifs type thing. Uh, for instance, what if we didn't pay 6% interest. Uh, we can always find out what annual interest rate we've got in the I register here by just doing a recall. If you do the recall, G, it's going to do the opposite of divide. It's going to multiply. So we're going to get the 6. And same thing with N. We want to see if we do a recall G and then hit 12, it'll, it'll divide and take the uh, three tell us we got 30 years instead of, you know, the, the, the value that's in N. Uh, that's just, that's just a, the value for N, if we recall N, it's still 360. Okay, and we recall I, it's still 0 0.5. When we do the recall GI, we're not putting anything in there. We're recalling it, multiplying it by 12, just so we're, we look at what to multiply it. So anyway, let's say we could get 5%, you know, so we do 5 GI and hit payment. You know, that gives us our new payment. So a lot of what ifs you can do here, and uh, you have total flexibility of looking at the numbers. You can recall the numbers if you want. Recall N, recall I, recall PV, recall payment, uh, recall future value. Notice they're all two clicks. Click for recall, a click for payment. All right, let's continue and take a look at another example of the financial Calculator. This is a little more advanced uh, uh, example, and it's kind of like you know a, a young married couple with a newborn wanted to give their uh, some thought to provide in a college education to their newborn family member when he or she turns 18 years of age and graduates from high school and is sent off to college. A lot of people have this concern with their, their, their children, so not knowing the college of their choice uh, or, or the choice of the, their offspring. 
or what the inflation would do to the tuition, the couple plans on a college cost of $150,000 for a four-year college. And this is to complement any scholarships or grant monies that may be available to their daughter or son. So hoping to wisely invest some monies in a fairly safe investment with an annual interest rate of 8%, compounding monthly, and starting with an initial deposit of $10,000, what amount of money would be required to be deposited on a monthly basis in order for this family to reach their $150,000 goal in 18 years? Okay, let's take a look at the key keystroking here because there's a little, little bit twist on this this one. Again, it's 18 years, so we do the G or 18 G N, and it's 8% interest. It's 8 G I. And the $10,000, now the $10,000 that they're going to put into this fund, and they're, they're taking it out of their pocket, and they're putting it into the investment, if you will. And so that, that amount, we have to change the signs. And, and you have to use the change sign key. The, it just changes the sign of whatever's in the X register. Uh, in this case, it was a plus 10000 It changes it to a minus 10000 that's the number that we want to put in the PV or the present value because we're taking ten thousand dollars out of our pocket putting it in the investment and then we wanted to have a hundred and fifty thousand dollars as our future value after eighteen years collecting eight percent interest so we do the hundred and fifty thousand yeah. when we hit payment the payment says you're gonna to have to take out of your pocket again with the minus sign two hundred and twenty four dollars and ninety five cents for monthly payments Okay, so an initial investment of $10,000 with cash infusions of $224.95 every month, if the investment's getting an 8% return, it'll yield a value of $150,000 after 18 years. Okay, let's look here again at the keystrokes associated with this particular one on the HP12C. Okay, here again is the data for example number two. And what we want to do on this particular one is take a look at how we key this data into the 12C. And actually, I don't know what we've got in the calculator in terms of numbers. We've got a lot of numbers in here. It, it really doesn't matter because we don't need to clear anything. Okay? Let's key in what we wanted to have. It was going to be 18 years. So we do an 18G, 12 times multiply, gives us 260 periodic payments. The interest rate on this investment we're going to hope for is an 8% annualized, so we get a monthly of divided by 12, 0.67. Our present value, we're going to take $10,000 out of our pocket, so we're going to change the sign on it, and put that into present value. And we're looking for what kind of monthly payment we'd have to put in this in order to get a future value of 150000 so a future value of 150,000 and we press payment and we see we've got our 224.95 that we need per month. Okay, uh, be sure and check out our other tutorials that we have. We have uh, tutorials on the six functions of the 12C. We have a tutorial on programming the 12C and there's a tutorial on the cash flow analyzer which is a real estate investment program that we've written for the, the 12C. Also, uh, check out our, our accessories. Uh, the accessories we have are good for all HP Series 10, which is the 12C is one of the Series 10 calculators. But we have the calculator stand where the, the little flip-down stand, it, it adheres to the back of your calculator and uh, it, with, with the little flip uh, folded down, the calculator along with the stand slips nicely back into the original uh, carrying case for the 12C. The leather calculator case that we have, uh, if you have the original case that the calculator came in, you're probably used to pulling it out of the case, putting the case down somewhere, using the calculator. When you're done with it, you fuss around to find it. There, oh, there's the case there. You pick it up, you put it back in the case, and then you put it away. Cumbersome way to work with it. With the, this hardback leather case here, you just flip the leather case open, you use the calculator, flip it closed, and put it in your pocket or your briefcase, whatever. 
So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this particular tutorial. Do come back, look at the others, and uh, thank you for viewing this one.